Greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. If uh, you don't know me, my name is Lisa Bubari. I am a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. Every Tuesday, I come live doing a Heal Talk Tuesday, hopefully bringing you some information or a resolution or a solution, maybe even an inspirational message to heal within. Today, I want to talk about fear and how so many of us are in fear. It may not be an easy talk because just yesterday I got a beautiful email thanking me for all my impromptu messages, which I call Hillspiration every day. And this email was talking about, but I'm afraid to lose my weight because if I lose my weight, this is what's going to happen. And, and she goes to explain in detail what her fears are, that because if she loses her weight, she's going to feel less than, because when she was thin, she was very self-conscious and everything. Now that she's overweight, she feels as if she is more strong and powerful, that her body is giving her a sense of control. You know, everything that we do, either physically, emotionally, or mentally, it is for a reason, and it's for a very good reason. So her message or her email to me was, but if I were to come to you to deal with my fears, are you going to work with my weight and will I lose my weight? Well, that was a first for me because so many who come to me as a clinical hypnotherapy, which is a module, the modality we use to help you heal within, is because they want to lose weight. They want to drop the weight. And by the way, I work with people who want to drop weight or manage their weight versus lose. I've talked about this before, and it's not about loss because feeling loss it's feeling as if you have lost something and you've lost control because when you lose, you're constantly looking, searching for it to find it. And until you don't find it, you feel a sense of loss, right? That's why I do not work with weight loss. I work with managing weight managing what it is that you want to have control of, better eating habits, better living habits, all this new way of being. So this fear that this client had, I had to ask her, is it the weight? Is it the control? Or is it that you live in fear? And what is the fear? We're not here to manage the weight, but manage ourselves. We're not afraid of within us, but we are afraid of being criticized. We are afraid of being judged. We are, some of us are even being we are afraid of success. Here's a warped way of being fearful of success. It's, have you ever felt like if you become so successful, your friends will think or say, hey, who do you think you are? Instead of saying, you are doing awesome. 
so many have fears. We fear the media. We fear what's happening politically. We fear what's happening with our insurance. We are fear in fear of what's happening in the country. We fear what do the neighbors say. We fear our siblings or what if your child goes out and something happens to them? It's this constant living in fear. That fear in itself creates what? Self-doubt. And when you start doubting yourself, doubting your decisions, doubting the way you live or the way you eat, then you start nitpicking. Nitpicking, am I doing this right? What if there is a better way? What if there's not? This self-judgment, self-criticism, the fear of I'm not good enough. You see, all those little fears that is from the outside, and it's not necessarily about who you are and what you feel, but you're in constant judgment of yourself, fearing, am I doing this right? Am I working hard enough? Am I a good mother or a father? Am I parenting right? Am I loving you enough? Or maybe even a teenager. Am I being accepted? I'm fearful that I don't belong to this group or this friend of mine, they just, they didn't call me. Or the worst thing that is happening nowadays, because we're so connected to this phone, it's like, what's wrong? I'm afraid that I'm not being seen, I'm not being heard, because no one is texting me, messaging me, or I just posted something and I'm afraid. How come no one is answering? How come no, no one is viewing? This constant sense of being on, being in fear. Now, do you feel that? Have you felt this constant worry and doubt, self-doubt, that you're afraid to even make a move, thinking, what if your next move is not the right move? What if you just are and you just be and come to accept and appreciate who you are just as you are. That's what my question was to her. And we got on the phone and I said, what are you really afraid of? Is it losing control? Is it not being seen? Or and not being appreciated as this powerful person because it's giving you this sense of mm, mama goose because that in itself is a persona is that real my question to so many of my clients and i've done my own deep work and wanting to connect and know, is this me or is this a BS? Let's make that clear, a BS. And it can be two versions of BS. It's either a BS, which is bullshit, right? Why would I want to be that? Or is it a BS that you have come to believe, which is a belief system? And that belief system, no matter where it was, how it was, that you came to believe 
about yourself or your habit or your body or whatever it was that you believe that sphere of yours is real. Fear, when we chop it down, is false emotions, the feelings, appearing real. It's not real. It's like someone saying, or I used to have fears of snake to a point that if I looked at a magazine, if, it, if I opened it and there was this fear of snake, I would scream or I would just go like this because, ooh, it was snake. But that snake from that magazine is not going to come live and come and wrap itself around me, right? So that feeling, that fear was not a reality. That fear of if she were to lose her weight, that she is no longer strong or powerful or in control, the way her persona was being represented or presented, has nothing to do with her weight. It's a belief system that was created by her for her in order to protect something. Now, so many of us create another way of protection. It can be the weight. It could be overeating, drinking, smoking, cheating. There's so many of those things. And it's all there because we pick it up and we keep doing it. And when it feels good, see, it's a sense of goodness. It's a sense of protecting or making us feel good that gives that whatever it is missing value. And it says, oh, I just did this. And this, doing this habit or doing this action or doing saying this, you're in affirmation or whatever, it gives me a sense of goodness. Uh, it felt good. And when something feels good, it gives you what? Joy. That sense of joy is what you want more of. So when you feel down and you do something that makes you feel good, you want to do that action more. When someone says something to you and makes you feel appreciated or good, you want more of that. That's why we listen to so many podcasts and recordings and affirmations. And some people listen to music and others listen to um, like Joel Osteen because he gives that sense of self-worth and appreciation for you to touch upon. And he also talks about God and the self-worth. So we either do things or receive things that gives us that self joy and worth. Every action has a reaction. We know that. But that reaction is what gives us that self worth and self joy. So we keep repeating what feels good. Now, if that repeating, that self-esteem, it can be healthy or unhealthy way of doing it. Smoking for so many gives a sense of... Guess what I did? Taking full breath... Lungs open, 
lungs stretch, diaphragm stretches, we take that full oxygen with a lot of smoke, but it's deep breath, and we fill up the lungs, smoke, but still fill up the lungs, and we take that few seconds of just being one with and swallow, exhale, exhale all the toxins. That action in itself can be quite mesmerizing. That action in itself is that one minute connectiveness to oxygen, to your body. It gives a moment of time out for yourself and it's connecting in action with your body. Every part of your lung, everything does exactly expanding the same way as if you were to do breath work with no cigarette. Hold for three, two, one. Exhale. Now one is healthy, one is less healthy. There's even people afraid that if they were to stop smoking, they won't be able to go to the bathroom, that if they don't smoke, they won't have the means of relaxation because smoking is giving them a sense of relaxation. That is called, I'm afraid if I stopped smoking, I won't be regular going to the bathroom. If I stop smoking, I won't be or have my excuse to have time out for myself to leave work, to take that 15 minutes, my excuse, to go and have my cigarette that legally I'm supposed to have my 15 minutes. Because if I don't do that, I must stay at my desk and produce. Well, no one forces us to do any of that. No one also forces you to produce constantly. And that sense of self overload, you have to have that excuse. And that's what we call constant fear base. Because sometimes that fear, it's not real. It's been created by you for you. Because as long as you hold on to that story of fear, this is why I'm smoking, this is why I'm drinking, or I have to drink so I can sleep better, or if I have to do this, it gives me a sense of uh, control or I come across bigger, more important in everything. And if we peel away the layers, you'll find out it was nothing. But it's not so much peeling away the layers of the fear. But will you be comfortable in getting to know you? And that's the work I do. And that's where I help my clients to evoke what was, to come to realize everything else is a symptom, right? To embrace what is, which is the reality, and become real with who you are what you do, why you do, and why you hold on to that kind of a BS. That is, if you want to, because no one is forcing you to do anything. No one can. No one has control over you. And the last thing that I do is the step 
steps that we do is for you to evolve to what it is that will be what you want. Because bottom line, that woman, that lady, truly wanted to feel confident and be respected for her position. That was the bottom line. Because she has earned it. She no longer needs to be overweight to be accepted or respected. That was the aha moment. Maybe you have felt something like that. Maybe you have resonated. Maybe you are holding to a story or a fear or a BS of your own that perhaps you didn't realize. If that makes sense, say hi. You can say yes, hello. Oh, hi. I Sorry, I was so in tune with speaking with you that I completely forgot. Let me see. This is live. <laughs> hello, Roya. Hi, Edie. Uh, hi, Lily. Um, I, I can't see any of the people who are here or any comments. Um, do you resonate with what I'm talking about? Have you had your own fear or your own belief system that you stuck with for so long? And maybe you've come to realize you no longer need it? That what you feared is no longer necessary. That truly, it's all about joy. Hi, Michael. Hello. We're talking about fears and how we can overcome fears and let go of belief systems that no longer matter. And loving, appreciating, accepting all that you are. And uh, yes, I can help. Yes, uh, the way I do it is maybe even one-on-one. -on -one. And if this resonates with you, you can always, just like this lady who called and emailed me first, and then we got on the phone and talked, we did a consultation and now she is a client but that's all it takes i do offer free consultations and complimentary consultations and to see if we are a fit that i can help you that you can unveil or let go of these fears and have a better belief system in place so that Bottom line is be everything and appreciate yourself more joyfully, more happily, more easily and readily. And peel away, peel away all those fears, self-doubt, and constantly being worried about other people's expectations of you and gets so much that you forget what you expect of yourself lovingly. So let me see, is there any questions? Is there anything I can share uh, right here? Uh, if Thank you very much for the beautiful thumbs up and the hearts. Um, you can always find me at healwithin.com. I will share that and post that and I'm here for you. One of the things that I say is to heal within, we must tap within. And it doesn't say that we have to go all the way to our childhood, but finding techniques and coming to just simple realizations, like the aha moment that this lady had. And it's simple. 
You know, transformation can happen instantly, and yet it's a journey. We have the aha moments that it sparks, and we recognize, oh my God, this is how long I've been holding on to this fear. I no longer want this. Perfect. But now it's the journey of what are the steps we're going to take to have and live a healthier lifestyle, a better way of being, more playfully. Hmm? Because that's what love is all about. Kids have no fear because they're just pure joy. Their innocence, what's this, what's that? They touch everything, they experiment everything, and when they don't like it, they spit it out. But when we don't like it, we hold it, we look around to see, hmm, am I supposed to swallow this? And if I don't, what's gonna happen? That self-criticism, self-judgment, self-analyzing, judging, criticizing, right? We can pass, bypass all that and find the joy with it. So the next time we do something, we say, this is it. I like myself, I like my body. And if it's not doing something for you, remember it's doing something to you. And that can be a habit, this ease, weight, whatever, or even a behavior. So to wrap this today, to let go of fear is to be more connected to joy because that's the opposite of fear. It's love, it's joy. May this afternoon be an incredible day of heal talk, self-realization, and if there's anything I can help you with, I'm here for you. Until next week, which is our scheduled Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, I bid you goodbye, bypass fears, and come back to more joy. And you can find me at healwithin.com. Until next week. Well, since there was no questions, I see you next week. Oh, by the way, I'm always here every single day for Healspiration. I might even cut down my Healspirations to one minute. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.